Well, it's late, I'm bored, and I'm surrounded by electronical things. Something has to give, and it's my BB unit's head. This is a one of the heads available for BB units that you can build at the Droid Depot in Galaxy's Edge. And this head has a couple of LEDs that light up. And the first question I had was, how does that work? Because you don't put batteries in the head, you just put the batteries in the body of the BB units. And so there's a quick way to discover the answer, which is open it up. No spoilers. Uh, or you could take a generic wireless phone charger, put your head over it, and you see the lights are blinking. It's just like a wireless phone charger. That is, there is a coil of wire in here pulsing electricity, just like there's a coil of wire pulsing electricity in the BB units. Uh, changing voltages induce electromagnetic waves, and if they're close enough to another piece of wire, it will induce current in that wire, making electricity flow and lights turn on. Does that make sense? No? Don't worry. It doesn't matter. The point is... Uh, then I'm going to open this up and I'm going to modify it. I want to put a different LED in it. You can see there's a, a red and a blue LED already in here. I want to put another LED. And I'm thinking right here, right at the top. It just It's asking for something to be put right there. So I asked uh, the Discord server real quick, what should I use? And I have a variety of LEDs. I have this box of generic LEDs of 3 and 5 millimeter sizes that you can easily pick up online. Uh, I also have many other options in my box of many LEDs. Uh, let me show you a few. Uh, for example, I have these monsters. These are 8 millimeter straw hat LEDs, which I have a hundred of them, and I don't want a single one of them. I bought these because I wanted a specific type of red LED. I didn't pay attention to the size, though. So when these arrived, I had to go and place an order for a different type of LED. Little LED tester, you plug it into a couple of holes here, press the button, and that is what that, those look like. And it's a nice concentrated LED car, color, but I want it diffused, which is why I'm thinking those. But I have yet other options. I have many of these. This is just a, a tiny sampling of these particular types of LEDs. Let me show you what they are. They're very cool. The fact that the leads are twisted makes me think I've already used this one. It starts out red. It's a nice diffused color. I like that. But it changes through all the different colors. The color changing LEDs uh, won't work with this. Well, they were. They would. It would only ever be red, though, because every time the, the LED blinks, it loses power for a second. When it loses power, it resets back to the beginning of its uh, color cycle, so it will always be red as it blinks. So these, eh, it's kind of a waste, really. So not that. Uh, I have this weird giant LED here. And it's red, and you can see it's got a lens on it, so if you're at just the right angle, it's a really bright, bright red. Uh, but from the side, you, it, it's barely visible. A lot of the time, you're going to be looking at this from the side or from at the angle. You're not going to be looking directly over it, so this LED uh, can't be used. I do have these. These are balloon lights. You can see the lens on this one is coming off, but... It, you, squeeze, you, you, you screw the bottom together, and uh, in this case, it's pink. And that's kind of interesting. Black and pink. And I could even take the lens here that's come off. And uh, look at that. It is a perfect fit. I could just drill that entire uh, black middle out, right, and put this in there with the pink LED, or any other LED, really. And I think that would look kind of cool, but that's going to require glue and time waiting and all that. It's just a lot extra to do. So I think the pink 
lights are out. Instead, we will just stick with the stock 5mm LEDs here. Not the red. The Discord server said yellow. I am using yellow. So I will put a yellow LED in here. In the top, you can see these LEDs. They have a lip on the base of them. So if you drill a roughly 5mm wide uh, hole, you can stick this up and it will only go so far. That lip will catch on the plastic and stop it from going further. And if the hole is tight enough, you can do a pressure fit. You don't need to glue it or anything. Uh, that's kind of what I'm shooting for here. And if I don't like this, then later on down the line, I can drill the hole out bigger and put that lens on and that'll look just as good. In fact, I may in the five minutes we are between now and actually starting to drill the hole, I might change my mind. But anyways, let's get into this. So the first thing I want to do here is grab a screwdriver with a larger bit here because if you can sort of peek down into the holes here, it's, it's, a, it's looking for a very large bit. So hopefully this will fit. And it does just barely. Uh, maybe that's not out enough. We'll find out. Oh, it wants to separate now. And off comes the top. And we can see, I hope we have uh, some contact pads here. There's a little channel going over here too where the LEDs are. So the power is coming in through those two pads from this contact here. These are springy buttons. And we could dig further and we would probably find underneath here. Well, let's keep going. Why not, right? There'll be a coil of wire. The coil of wire is what's uh, picking up the electricity, the electromagnetic waves from the base. Uh, the question then becomes, is, what else is there? Is there going to be a, a bridge rectifier to produce a, a DC power? Will it be in the base here? Um, I've got all the screws out, right? Okay, there we go. I want to be careful here. I see two thin copper wires. There we go. Two thin copper wires going over these pads over here that have those spring-loaded uh, elements on the other side. Three. Oh, nope, just two. Am I missing? I might be missing a third uh, weight. Or not weight, uh, magnet. But I think if we take this little T section off here, we're going to see right in the middle there should be a coil of wire. This is just to confirm how this works before we put it all back together. Yep. There is the coil of wire I was talking about. And are these magnets loose? Is there a chance that this fell out somewhere? Looking at the, the, uh, the inside of the BB units, there is a T-shaped section with magnets, so I'm assuming that there should be a magnet here that I have lost somewhere. Nah, eh, it happens. So I'm just going to put this back. I'm going to put the this bottom back together. So what we know here, this picks up the electricity. It goes through those uh, uh, springy pins to the top. All the electronics are going to be in there. So I'm going to put the base here back together, and then we'll dig into the top. Okay, let's get into this. We have one, two screws there, and two screws there. 
Let's go to town. Okay. Put those screws out. Put them aside. Just in case these screws are different. Little piece of plastic here going across holding this little PCB in place. This PCB it looks like is going to have some electronics on it. Quick comparison of the screws. They look like the same to me. So if I mix these four screws up, not a big deal. PCB. That's kind of interesting. You can see if this thing wants to focus. There are a couple of metal nuts in there. So that's a little unexpected. These screws, for example, there's no metal. I oh, know those do have metal nuts. What's that for? The metal nuts are for these screws that go in here like that and hold the whole thing together. So this is designed so that the top, they expect people to take the top off. Otherwise, they would not put the metal screws in there. It would be uh, plastics cut into the, or threads cut into the plastic. But because they put a couple of metal screws in there, or metal nuts in there, uh, repeated screwing and unscrewing will not destroy the threads or strip the threads because they're metal screw, uh, metal nuts. So it is safe to go ahead and experiment and pop your BB head off, to some extent anyways. Okay, what do we have here? We have the two pads. That's interesting, marked with a B. Flip it over and we have, zoom in maybe a little bit more, oh, too much. So it looks like we have two sets of wires here. Oh, I got the feeling I'm going to have to resolder these. So plus and B, plus and B, plus and R, plus and R. So it looks like these would be for the blue LED. So th these wires probably go off to the blue LED, and that's probably why there's a blue wire. And these probably go off to the red LED. Let's see how they are wired up here. What's the contact pads? How are they connected? Okay. There are the two contact pads. Vias are here and here. So if we flip it over, we can see where those wires continue on to the opposite side. We could see wire electricity is going to come in through here through the plus sign so this is intended to be the positive side this is intended to be the negative side a small capacitor to help smooth out some of the the, the power spikes because it'll come through in spikes uh, what do we have here there's no bridge rectifier I guess the LEDs are sort of rectifying the electricity on their own and these resistors are going to be current limiting or limiting the current to the LEDs. How has that worked? We can see all four of these resistors are common to what we'll treat as the negative side. So four resistors, four LEDs. So does that mean that they're Two of these resistors are going to pads that they're just not used. That's what it That's what it looks like to me. The negative side of the LED. Remember the plus is the positive side. It comes back through the the R, the negative side, through this 331, it looks like. 330 ohm resistor. 
positive goes out here and it'll come back it looks like the trace goes over here to a 270 ohm resistor so more current will flow through this LED this and this LED and the two blues it looks like are both both 100 ohm resistors or actually they might be 10 ohm resistors one zero and zero zeros after it yeah so these two blue resistor LEDs they would have the same current this one is going to have less current than this one and because the yellow LED will have a higher forward voltage I think I'm gonna tap into here all right that seems simple enough and then how do I wire it here this is this is where reality starts to hit where a good idea is suddenly destroyed in the moment so that goes in like that the PCB here is pushed and screwed down remember it's How was it? Was it like that? And that went across like that. So the wires for the new LED would have to come off there. I don't need a lot of slack, but I have room for slack in here. And then just stick the LED right through the middle there. So drill the hole here. And uh, I don't need a resistor. There's already one there. Yeah, I think that's the plan. So I'm going to get some wire and uh, a drill with an appropriate bit and start to work on this. All right, I'll show you a little bit of the process here. This is some 28-gauge uh, uh, silicone wire here. I've got this tape to keep the wire, the loose wires here, uh, available for me to grab. Uh, so I will do some red and some yellow since that seems to be the way that they did the wiring colors. I don't think I need much wire. Just a couple inches really. That'll do. Now I want to strip the ends off a little bit. Because this is a silicone insulation, it's very chewy, so you can strip it very easily with just some side cutters like this. Alright, I should probably turn my iron on. Where is my... LED, some helping hands, LED you have a short lead and a long lead, the long lead is the positive, positive going by their nomenclature here should be red and negative will be yellow. Now because this LED is going to be sticking down a little ways. The leads need to be cut short before I solder anything to it. So now is the point where we have to remember, okay, which end is positive? Well, you don't have to. You can just cut the positive one first and solder that. Just don't let me forget that I just cut the, the positive side. So I'll tin this. Grab the orange wire. And I will pre-tin that as well. Stick 
day. Now it should be a simple matter. Getting this lined up just the way I like it. Both wires are already tinned. It should be just a matter of applying heat, letting the solder on both of them flow, holding it there for a second, and there's a connection. So now we do the same for the yellow side. You can see the, oops, the ends there are frayed a little bit. No big deal. Just pinch the end and twist it. Get this thing positioned. I am most comfortable. Good connections. Okay. I'm going to take a tiny piece of heat shrink here have, this came with uh, some electronics kit you can get heat shrink tubing very cheaply in many different sizes online it's just a I don't need much more than a centimeter really and just snake it through all the way up to the LED probably don't need to do this but it's just a, a nice way to uh, help protect against potential shorts And then to heat it up, there's a bunch of different options. You can use hot air, you can use uh, a lighter, or you can take your iron, pick a spot that you don't solder with. So, you know, anywhere around here. And just let it do the shrinking for you. There. Good enough. I might uh, go and retouch that up a little bit. That's the idea. I'm going to get set up here now to wire it up to here. To make this solder, this soldering go a little bit easier, I'm actually going to take all of this out so I don't have to deal with the, the body of the head here. And I'm going to have to kind of leave it there anyways, because that is heat staked in. I could remove it, but then that LED is going to be loose. So I'm going to have to leave it like that. Leave the head off to the side. And the solder in like so. So where am I targeting? I want to go connect the wires to, I'll zoom in here. Positive should be the red line and the R 
just above that should be the yellow line. Right? Yes, the R should be the yellow line. That's the theory. We'll find out in a second. So I will put a dab of solder on both pads. The positive side isn't taking solder because it has more copper attached to it. It needs more heat because you got to heat up the whole copper area underneath the green solder mask before it'll start to melt. Next step, let us pre-tin these wires. Just want to get a little solder on there. It'll help the connections flow be more easier if that's good English. Come on, stay. Good enough. Now those leads a little extra length to that that really we don't need. So I'm going to trim it just a little bit. Okay, so red should be positive. to the R. That is it. That is a completely out of focus PCB. There we go. Okay. That, in theory, is the end of soldering. Uh, now, I was thinking, hey, wouldn't it be nice to do a test, but, uh, could I? How would I do that? I suppose it actually doesn't matter which direction this goes. Yeah, it doesn't matter which direction it goes. So if I just hold it in place like that. Then we should be able to see these lights light up. If I've got this lined up right. There we go. You see the blue lighting up, and you also see the yellow lighting up. Good. The electronics work. All right, now comes time. Now comes time for the destructive part, drilling a hole in there. So the way I'm going to start here is actually I'm gonna I think I'm gonna put all the electronics under here so I can push down and I don't have to worry about accidentally pinching the wire sticking out the side. Uh, I need a five millimeter hole or actually just slightly narrower than that. This is a three sixteenth and a three thirty second. Three sixteenth is not wide enough but it's close enough and I'll probably just gouge it out a little bit more afterwards. Uh, three thirty second bit is to drill a pilot hole so that when I put the bigger bit through, it will hopefully uh, stay straight. So hang on a sec. We'll see how this goes. You can't see anything. Oh, just bear with me. Oops, wrong way. Hoo-hoo! 
All right. The pilot hole has been done. Time to change to the big bit. I'm going slow here. Come on. Eh, not quite centered. I'll take care of that. So you can see there's some bits there. I can probably take care of that with a hobby knife. And we take that LED and we will find very quickly not quite... Oh! Maybe it is enough. You know what? That's perfect. That is... I thought I was going to have to do a little more work, but that looks pretty good. Cool. So now we just got to clean this up, package it all up, and try it out. A uh, little reassembly tip here. This LED is heat staked, it's not going anywhere. This one floats around and it needs to stay in place long enough for you to get the cover back on. So what I find works is holding these two wires down after you've lined everything up and it sort of wants to stay in place at that point. And try and come down and hopefully you got it. And that's a little bit off. Oh, there we go. It snapped right into place. Perfect. Nearly there. Uh, there was definitely a little extra finagling to get the wire, the new wires, to fit underneath here. Uh, just because they wanted to squirt out the side as I was putting this back on. I definitely used a lot more wire than I needed to. Um, I probably could have gotten away with half that length. But uh, it just it made the assembly more comfortable for me. So that's why the wire was as long as it was. Uh, if you ever do this, feel free to not follow my example. Uh, so now this has to go back on. Does anybody remember how it has to go? I assume because all of this is cut out here and there's this protrusion where the LED is. It must go like that. And it's a little springy because of those, uh, because of these contact pins. So it's just a matter of screwing it back together. screw too hard just enough all right time for the final test well second to final test we'll put it on the droid in a second yeah that does not look half bad all right time to put it on the droid bb droid with its head back on. <laughs> Works exactly like I wanted it to. So there you go, a successful mod of the Galaxy's Edge BB Droid.